What's up, Mitten Squad? My name is Paul and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be going over six more sad Fallout stories. Number 6. A True Nightmare Synths are a big part of the Fallout 4 story. A lot of the time, you can't even tell who's a synth and who's not. Sometimes though, people don't even know if they're human. Enter Phyllis Daly. She's an older woman living in the Egret Tours Marina in the Commonwealth. After her daughter's death, she gained entry into a farm where she could work for shelter for her and her grandson, Samuel. One night while on guard, she fainted. The sound of a gunshot woke her up. Upon waking up, she found herself with a gun in her hand, standing in front of her grandson, who was dead on the ground. Having no other explanation, she assumed that she was a synth, controlled by the Institute who had given her an order to kill. So she locked herself away. Should the sole survivor choose to kill her, she will not drop any synth components. You can find out through a terminal that she had been suffering from nightmares for a long time. It's assumed that she fell asleep and shot her grandson. Number 5. There's no place like home. After completing the quest The Waters of Life in Fallout 3, you can pick up a distress signal from Vault 101. The message is from Amada, who asks you to return to the vault to stop the Overseer. That could either be her father or Alan Mack, depending on whether or not you killed the Overseer before you left the vault. After the Lone Wanderer left Vault 101, things went downhill quickly and two factions emerged. One wanted to open the vault to the outside world, and the other who wanted it to remain closed. If you choose to open the vault, Amada will take the role of the Overseer. She will then say a line, which references a line from the original Fallout. I'm sorry. You're a hero, and you have to leave. Number 4. The Chosen Few At the start of Fallout 4, you meet a representative of vault Tech who gets some information from you prior to the bombs falling. On your way to the vault, you'll see that despite working for vault Tech, the representative isn't allowed inside the vault. Like everyone else unfortunate enough to be trapped outside, he is presumed dead. He did survive, though. He can be found on the third floor of the Hotel Ruxford, and you can actually talk to him, and he remembers the sole survivor. Since the Great War, he's been alone, no friends, no family, just himself. His life is a depressing tale of woe. He had to live for over 200 years with the fact that vault Tech never cared about him and that he wasn't meant to be saved. He was a tool. However, he can be convinced to head to Sanctuary and help out there. Number 3. Raul Tejeda if you've watched my oldest Fall character videos, you know all about Raul by now. If not, you're about to. Raul Tejeda is a ghoul mechanic who has been trapped at the prison atop Black Mountain. Raul grew up on Hidalgo Ranch near Mexico City. He was a marksman as well as a mechanic. When the bombs fell, the ranch was spared from destruction. Eventually, survivors tried to take refuge at the ranch and became violent. Raul and his father had to drive away the survivors. Later that night, about two dozen men returned and set fire to the ranch house, barring the doors from the outside to prevent any escape. Raul woke up to the smell of smoke and was able to sneak himself and his sister Rafaela Tejeda out a window, receiving burns across his entire body in the process. The rest of his family, consisting of his mother, father, grandmother, two brothers, and two sisters, died in the flames. Raul and his sister headed to Mexico City, where Raul was affected by intense radiation, turning him into a ghoul. Sometime later, he discovered the signal of Black Mountain Radio. He went there and fixed the radio. Unfortunately for Raul, Tabitha, the ruler of Black Mountain, kept him in prison for an unknown number of years, until the courier stumbles upon him and sets him free. Number 2. The Death of Carla Boone if you've played Fallout New Vegas, you should know a lot about Boone and his wife. Upon entering the dinosaur Novak during Boone's shift, he'll ask you to look into something for him because you're a stranger. He suspects that someone in Novak sold his wife to Legion slavers. He wants you to find out who. With a bit of detective work, you can discover that Jeannie Mae Crawford was the one who sold Boone's wife Carla to the Legion. Jeannie Mae was paid 1,000 caps for Carla, as well as another 500 for Carla's unborn child. Boone tracks the slavers back to Cottonwood Cove, where Carla was being held, as well as several hundred other slaves who were being sold. Rather than letting his wife be sold to Legion slavers, Boone fired a shot from his rifle and took his wife's life. Number 1. The True Story of vault -Tec. At the surface, vault seems like a great company. After all, they constructed potentially hundreds of vaults for American citizens to use as refuge from a potential nuclear war. But the more vaults you learn about, the more you realize that vault -Tec had a much more sinister goal in mind. You see, vaults weren't just shelters for their potential vault dwellers. The vaults were part of what would be known as the Societal Preservation Program. 
Those who entered the vaults may have been spared death by nuclear annihilation, but that does not mean they didn't suffer. Each vault had its own experiment. Some were relatively straightforward, like a vault filled with hundreds or thousands of women and only a single man, or the reverse. The people in these vaults were supposed to live for generations, with only one man or one woman. It doesn't take long for inbreeding to occur. Another vault was a testing facility for a virus, which ended up creating one version of super mutants thanks to quite a bit of unwilling participation from the vault dwellers. Perhaps the worst vault of them all, though, is Vault 11. Most of the horrors of Vault 11 are psychological. Vault 11 was a social experiment testing human nature, more specifically, the ability to sacrifice oneself for others and the ability to place ideals above one's own life. That experiment is quite simple, really. The vault's inhabitants are told that they must sacrifice one of the vault dwellers every year. If one person wasn't sacrificed, they would all be killed. The twist is that they wouldn't actually die. Instead, a message would play telling them that they are a shining example of humanity, and that the vault door would be unlocked so they could come and go as they pleased. By the time the vault's dwellers discovered this, only five remained. Alright, that's gonna do it for this video about six more sad Fallout stories. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions for any future top 10 video about any game or game character. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paula of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.